Hello and welcome to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. I'm Aurelio Martinez along with my co-host Stephen Johnson and we've got a pretty good show for you. Today we're going to talk a little bit about an amateur show that's uh, coming into town, into Denver, and where it's going to put the elite boxing amateurs head-to-head. -head. We've got a Texas team coming in that's going to go head-to-head -head against a Colorado team. Uh, very, very nice way of doing an amateur show to showcase our graduating amateurs and our open class amateurs. Uh, after all, these guys are going to be our future pros. So, a very good show. We'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about the Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez fight. Four times. Four times. Good thing, bad thing. Uh, we're going to just kind of kick that around. And we're going to talk about the status of USA Boxing. For those that follow the amateur and the USA Boxing, the people around uh, the country know, around the world actually know, that uh, USA has not fared well in the Olympics uh, for the past uh, few times. And uh, this time was no exception. Uh, so that uh, whole organization is in turmoil and they're doing some things. We're going to talk about that and give you an update because we've got some breaking news on that topic that we're going to bring back to you. So basically, uh, Stephen, um, we can go on and we can talk about uh, uh, this, this very nice amateur uh, show. It's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of different from your regular amateur shows that you see across the country where uh, a local fighter just kind of match up and uh, they do a, a weigh-ins and they kind of match each other up and then they do the show. Uh, this is kind of different where it's all pre-matched. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got uh, elite fighters fighting each other from two different states. Uh, so it kind of has that professional flavor. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, credit to, uh, to you, Aurelio, yourself, and uh, the former WBC lightweight world champion, uh, Lightning Lonnie Smith, who has his uh, Lightning Lonnie Smith Learning Center here in Denver. And you, you guys got together and collaborated on, on making this uh, fight card happen. Great thing, like you said. Um, just to showcase some of the seniors, you know, that people around the area haven't got to see that much. I mean, um, unfortunately for us, um, one of our top Colorado boxers, Andrew Strode, who was uh, designated to fight on this card, broke his hand in a fight uh, about a month ago, I think it was. Yeah, he took, he took a fight uh, at, at another amateur show mm -hmm. about... Uh, a couple of weeks before this fight, and that's just that's just kind of the way the amateur scene is. You know, in, in the uh, professional ranks, uh, uh, when you have a, a fight of this importance coming up, you don't take a fight in between. You know, uh, uh, plus in the in the uh, in the professionals, it's contracted that you cannot take a fight for that very reason, so that uh, a fighter doesn't get hurt and uh, hurt the hurt, hurt the uh, card. Uh, I know a lot of people were looking forward to seeing Andrew Strode on the card. Uh, he's one of the uh, uh, elite fighters here in, in Colorado, but he did break his hand, so he's been replaced, and uh, uh, that Texas guy will be seeing a different uh, a different face, but uh, mm -hmm. talking about this show, um, <clears throat> you know, Steve, I, I haven't been involved in the amateur uh, scene for, for many years, 20, 25 years, going back into the uh, early, mid-80s, and uh, just kind of got away from it and stood on the uh, professional level. Um, this year was kind of different. I got myself back involved because uh, there's a few amateurs that are really showing some promise. Mm -hmm. And very, very strong, skilled, talented. Um, and, and they don't get the exposure. And the way the, uh, the amateur scene is with the USA Boxing, uh, fighters like this all across the country don't get the exposure that they really need to make a leap for them Olympics uh, uh, in, in uh, trials and to make it, uh, I think everyone, what I've been hearing and what I've known is, you know, everyone pretty much thinks that's always been pre-selected, that they had their favorites and that they didn't always send the best fighters to represent the USA. Well, by doing shows like this, at least all across the country, people will be able to see the elite fighters and not just the same names, not, not just the names that a certain group of people want them to see. So that's, that's the whole idea behind this. Well, that's a good point. And like I said, uh, unfortunately, Andrew won't be able to participate. Um, you know, the, um, this was leading up to the PAL Nationals, um, which are, um, I believe, October, start on the 8th or the 11th of October in Toledo, Ohio. That's where you'll have all the uh, top kids that will be around the country that will be there participating in that. 
particular fight card. And that's, you know, there will be some little bit of media attention to that. But unfortunately, like you said, not proper what we would really like to see coverage for these top amateur kids. Um, everyone wants to watch Olympic boxing. And for the people that don't follow amateur boxing, all they know about um, um, the amateurs that are participating in the Olympics are when they hear from the once every four years what um, Dan Raphael and ESPN has to say. And they have not followed amateur boxing at all, so they really don't know. Exactly. So it's unfortunate that it happens. But like you said, hopefully a card like this you know, will uh, start to make big, big momentum and, and other, this will snowball into things like this happening all across the country. Another thing I'll be happy about this card is we have two of our girls here who are Golden Gloves champions, national Golden Gloves yeah, champions. Absolutely. We have Amadena Baca and Kirsty Simmons. Yeah, uh, Kirsty fights out of the A1 Boxing Club in Aurora, mm -hmm. and Amadena is out of uh, 20th Street Boxing Club downtown. So it's a good card. I expect to see. Um, hopefully, we'll have a, you guys will have a nice uh, crowd there. Um, uh, ticket prices ten dollars on general admission, fifteen dollars for floors. Uh, floor seating. Um, you can contact Lonnie, uh, Lonnie uh, Smith's uh, Learning Center at that number on the radio. Um, well, I guess they can even call him or they can contact you, yeah, right? Call the number. Yeah. Your number, 720-297-7654. Or for those that are here in Denver that know where Lonnie's uh, um, gym is, is the old is East Denver Y right over there off 30th and Madison. Um, you can go over there and get tickets. Uh, or you can get tickets the day of the event, which will be Saturday, this Saturday, October the 6th, or the 8th. What the is 6th, it? 6th? October 6th. October 6th. And, and uh, for those those of you not local to Denver and Colorado, uh, you'll still be able to see the fight, simply because uh, we're going to uh, video this uh, card, and we'll have it on the Internet uh, on, on our, one of our throwdown shows so that you guys can take a look at it. I mean, he was speaking about uh, the girls of the female fight, the uh, the sole reason we put this on is because uh, the females have always they, they tend to take a back seat not only in coverage but in exposure and just just boxing in general I mean uh, but these two girls are champions uh, we're going to have an excellent fight uh, and I guarantee you it's going to be better than the, the Mia St John versus Christy <laughs> Martin fight okay so and uh, so so that's saying a lot. Well, maybe it's not saying a lot, but but these girls are, these girls are coming to win and they're coming to fight and uh, look forward to seeing that that action packed. Uh, Speaking of that, Aurelio, when you talk about the girls and women's boxing, um, we've had the f good fortune of just finding out that um, tomorrow we will have a, a segment where we will have as our special guest uh, Dr. Pedro Roque Otano who has just been named as the USA Boxing National Teaching Coach. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the International Teaching Coach. <coughs> He's a Cuban defector. Um, Dr. Roque Altano's um, record is impeccable. He is, uh, was so, high, uh, United States was actually lucky to get this man. He would have been accepted with open arms by any boxing program around the world. Like I said, his resume is impeccable. USA Boxing was able, that's Dr. Charles Butler, the president and executive director, Anthony Barkowski, who were able to pull this off. I don't mm -hmm. know how they did it, but they did. They got him here. Um, we've had, had a backlash about Dr. Roque Altano. So far, some comments that are attributed to him um, negatively about women. Uh, one mm -hmm. particular comment said that um, Dr. Roque Altano had said that women are, you know, are too pretty to get punched in the face and they shouldn't be getting punched in the face. So we're going to have him as a guest on our show. He will be in one segment speaking Spanish only to a radio, um, the language that he is comfortable with, so that our Spanish-speaking uh, viewers can hear out of his own mouth what he says about these st uh, statements that he's already said to me that that's not true, but he needs to hear it from in his own language so that there can be no no uh, discrepancy, no misinterpretation in any kind, hear from his own mouth. Yeah, we're going to come back and talk about that whole USA thing because... Uh uh, it, it's absolutely a hot topic, and we, we won't get into it now because that's on the on very next. We're going to talk about the Pacquiao, but we do want to bring you guys up to date on the USA Boxing. Uh, Steve had mentioned that uh, uh, they are lucky, uh, uh, meaning USA Boxing, to land a, 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 a trainer, a coach like, uh, like uh, Roque. Uh, well, that's up to opinion. There's a lot of people out there that are not happy, and uh, there's a lot of people out there that... Uh, 
feel that maybe that wasn't the best. So we're going to come back and talk about that. But Steve, before we talk about that hot topic uh, involving USA Boxing and, and all, let's talk about the professional fight with this Manny Pacquiao. Okay, we, I mean, it seems like it seems like day in and day out, you can't talk about professional boxing without the names Manny Pacquiao and uh, and Floyd Mayweather coming in. Thing, it's like, are they the only two boxers that? people want to talk about, I mean, because that's all you hear about. I mean, you've got websites that they just continue to write stories about uh, uh, this fight has to happen, this fight has to happen. And between you and I, Steve, and everybody out there, I can care less if that fight happens, okay? I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm not even looking forward to it happening anymore. I, uh, so, so, let's talk about Manny Pacquiao. He's staying active, he's trying to stay active, he's fighting. So Bob Aaron put together a Juan Manuel Marquez, Manny Pacquiao, uh, fourth time around. Okay, so, so, so let's talk a little bit about that. Good fight, bad fight, worth watching. Uh, give me your opinion on that fight. I'll tell you what. Um, I think that this fight is going to be worth watching for one reason. And the one reason is that I think Manny Pacquiao and... And Juan Manuel Marcus are both of the of the opinion that they've been screwed around in the in this situation with these fights. Uh, Juan Marcus firmly believes that he won all three fights. All of them. Yeah. Manny Pacquiao firmly believes he's won all three fights. And from what I've heard from both of them, um, they're both going to fight. There's no going. There's not going to be any of this, um, you know, dancing around. Just you know, Juan Marcus defending himself rather than being aggressive offensively. Juan Marcus is on record now, a radio is saying that he's going to knock out Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao says, is on record saying that he's going to knock out Juan Marcus. So I'm anticipating these guys coming out, going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow to blow, and somebody is going to be the decisive winner because I think somebody's going to get stopped in this fight. Well, I hope so. I mean, it actually make it good. I think they got away with the, uh, with the uh, four one. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll get away with the fifth one. Oh, I don't okay? think so either. So basically, this is it. This yes. is it. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little leery, personally, as a boxing fan. Uh, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, of course, uh, is up there in age. Uh, he's not at his weight. He kind of he worked his way up into this 47-pound, uh, this welterweight. Uh, he's not a welterweight. Uh, now, because of his older age, is because he's putting weight on. It's not because it's his natural weight. We know that. So uh, I don't look for a knockout by him of Manny Pacquiao by no means, okay? I just don't think he's going to have the strength at 47 where Manny Pacquiao has proven that he has strength at 47. Mm -hmm. He's proven that he's still strong at 47. Uh, so if there is a knockout, I would have to favor it going that way, but Manny Pacquiao knocking out Marquez. But I don't see a knockout period in this thing. I think you're going to have an action-packed fight that, uh, that again, will be a crowd pleaser. So, uh, well, let, let me, let me yeah. put it this way. I'm going to lead into our next conversation. But I'm telling you that I think this fight is going to be comparable to the fight we're going to talk about next, where we have a, a next weekend, not this coming, but the final weekend, where we have Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado. Um, somebody is going in that fight, and going by your analogy, you'd have to favor Mike Alvarado because, of once again, if you say he's fighting at his natural 140, and uh, Brandon Rios, you know, some people would dispute if lightweight is his natural or, you know, we know in the past couple of fights that Brandon's had that lightweight isn't his natural weight. So see, this is going to be a great See, Matty Pacquiao, I don't know want to hear about you no more, man. This guy just kind of... No, uh, you know, like, no, 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 like you okay, said, fine. Manny Pacquiao, this is the <laughs> and Juan Marcus 4. No, but I mean... I mean, all, no, but I mean, I mean that, that's the way the world feels. Yeah. That's the way the world feels. It's yeah. like, okay, it's happening. Yeah. Okay, it's happening, but okay... It's happening. We'll watch. If it's a pay-per-view, we may not watch. Yeah. If they, um, get, if they actually get but, in there and both of them fight, we'll talk about that. It was a great fight. If not, we'll say we don't want to hear about, you know, Marcus you're, Pacquiao 5. We but you're absolutely right on the Rios-Alvarado fight. Uh, uh, really, I'm anticipating this being fight of the year. I really I, am. I, I think you're going to oh, yeah. have probably one of the best fights uh, uh, of the decade in that fight. I think because both fighters uh, want to go in there and prove a point. Both fighters are are uh, uh, willing to put it all on the line. Uh, I actually see that fight better than the main event uh, with um, with, uh, Donito? with Donito Donaire. 
Um, so I well, just you know what I I would tend to agree, um, but I'll tell you what the reason why this fight is mainly intriguing to me is because everybody knows Brandon Rios likes to talk shit. Okay. Yep. yep. Brandon Brandon and Mike Alvarado have a mutual respect for each other. Sure they do. And there's not any of that. I, and and that's what leads me to believe that this is just gonna be a flat out old school brawl where well, these guys are gonna go. And I think that everybody that watches it, that's a fight where I think you can come away from and you're gonna say. That was a fight. I think so. And that's what fans are really clamoring for I, nowadays. The radio, we want to see fights. Again. We want to see fights again. So I, I just think it's it's going to be it, it's just going to be one in fights. I mean, uh, you got a fighter that I think one side favors the skill and talent, and then you got the other side where I think favors the uh, power and the aggression. So you put them together, and I think we're going to have a good fight. And we're going to talk about that on on a segment next week. Yes, we specifically, will. we'll. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, dedicate a segment just to the Brandon Reels and, and Mike Alvarado fight. Oh, we have to do that because, you know, Mike Alvarado, our fans know that that's one of our Colorado, our Denver boys. And so, we'll you know, um, I know you're a big fan of, as I am, of Brandon Rios and big fans of Mike. And so it's going to be a great fight. I know, know both fighters. I know both fighters and I know what both fighters are capable of. Them, so let me ask you one thing real quick while we're on that top. We'll, we'll just move move right along here. But. Last, this past week, we got some information that uh, Amir Khan has just signed his trainer as Virgil Hunter. And um, now it looks like Amir Khan sometime in December is going to fight Paul McCloskey. Um, a, a date and time, uh, and then you have not been specifically mentioned right now. But what do you think about Paul McCloskey after... Now, remember Paul McCloskey just got the decision yeah. against our hometown guy, Manny Perez. And everybody that watched that fight, I don't know. You, you know, can say I, that Manny, you know, Manny, Manny Perez lost the fight. You can say uh, Paul McCloskey won it, whatever you want to. But how how Amir Khan is allowed to come and pick Paul McCloskey? Um, you know, I, I I don't know, and and I don't support that. I, I I I can't support Amir Khan anymore. You know, I just I just can't. I'm sorry. I I did. You know, we talked about it, and I did for for the longest time because I actually thought he uh, he uh, uh, had the skills and he was sincere. I, I thought he'd be similar to uh, Ahmed, uh, uh, the prince, mm -hmm. and and he hasn't lived up to that. He hasn't lived up to that, and uh, at this point, I'm I'm convinced in my mind that he's not the fighter that he he was uh, publicity publicity portrayed to be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's not even the same league as uh, Ahmed, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm a firm believer. So. Uh, he can go ahead and fight McCloskey. Uh, we got Rob Franco here. He can try to fight. Uh, Rob will give him everything he, he's uh, he's uh, bargaining for. Him, probably even win. Yeah. Uh, so so good for him. He's gonna go back down to fighting club level fights, <laughs> but still make the money. And well, that's see, because Golden Boy is yeah, gonna pay him you, the money. You people, you know, that have followed us, you know, for the last couple of years, you're very aware that all along I told you that uh, Amir Khan. C O N Amir Khan. That that's a that was a game that was allowed to be perpetrated by Golden Boy Promotions with Amir Khan. Everyone knows that's a boxing fan. You know knows that n number one problem he has is he has no chin. Now how Virgil Hunter is going to help him develop a chin? Good luck with that one. I'll well, have to see that. Well, but well, wait a minute. Let me tell you. One of the first things before um, Khan had signed on with Virgil Hunter in a conversation with Virgil Hunter, the first thing he said was. Amir Khan needs to stay away from big punches for a while. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's why he goes against McCloskey. You know the fight that I'd like to see. I would like to see him take if he says he's back and he's all of this. Let him fight Ma Maidana. Maidana's on the on the upswing right well, now. We, we ain't gonna get that. But he's too dangerous we, for him. Like you said, we have our we, we, ain't get we have our Rob Franco. Yeah. You know, we have Manny Perez. We've got a lot of guys that will give Amir Khan a run for his money now. And but, here you guys are talking but, to a supporter of, of, of uh, Amir Khan. I, I, I was a supporter of him for a long time. And, and basically, that's one of the reasons why I was turned off is because of his selection uh, for for this coach, uh, Hunter. Okay? Virgil Hunter? That, to me, is, is not going to help the cause anyway. I mean, Virgil Hunter is just basically giving him the answers he wants to hear. You think so? Absolutely. He needs a he needs a trainer to say, "Hey, you're no good. We got to get back in the gym and we got to work on some things because right now you're not a good fighter." Okay. Instead of going and getting a trainer that's going to say, "Yeah, you're right. You need to fight McCloskey. Yeah, you're right. You need to fight John Jacobs." So 